It took him the rest of the day to maneuver through the building trying to make his way back to Na Yeon. It seemed as if all the activity that they had drawn before had made it even harder to move around the school as the zombies were more active after it searching for them. Chi Ong Sen couldn't make it before sundown and resorted to waiting to move overnight so that he could also get some rest. The fight with Gwen Am had been draining and he could still feel the pains all over his body and bruises left around his neck. He rested for a short while, he thought but by the time he woke up the sun had gone down and it was darker. When he had snuck around at night before he had seen that the zombies had worse vision. Well sometimes so he got out of his hiding spot slowly. The area around him was a little bit clear most likely the zombies had gone off to chase a poor soul. He shook the thought off, he knew he couldn't save everyone. Chi Ong San ducked and dodged all the way to the classroom where he knew Na Yeon was hiding. He had made sure not to run around but was moving slowly and cautiously crouched turning around at the slightest noise. Na Yeon Na Yeon he silently shouted waiting for her. He knew he could call for a bit but making too much noise was a bad idea. He could hear some groans coming from down the hallway but couldn't see anything. Chi Ong San didn't want to think of himself being surrounded so close to salvation. So he decided once a bit louder Na Yeon he said a quick short whispered shout. He heard the groaning grow louder before he saw them down the hall. It was a small group of 8 or 10 zombies but he knew starting a fight with them would only calm more Na Yeon open up the jig was up so he was throwing gosh into the wind. He heard the zombies roar as they started charging toward him from down the hall and he readied himself for a fight. But as he saw the zombies coming in the distance the door beside him swung open and he was dragged inside before it quickly shut being locked. He felt himself rushed to the room as the zombies arrived and started banging on the door. They retreated to the back room and shut the door making sure to lock it as well. And Chi Ong San finally let out a sigh of relief as he leaned back against the door breathing heavily. He felt Na Yeon pressing up against him as she wrapped her arms around his waist holding him tightly. Chi Ong San wrapped his arms around her patting her head softly as he tried to catch his breath. I thought you left me. Or that you died. He shushed her softly no no I didn't. Just had a lot of traffic that's all. She let out a small giggle as she pulled away looking at him in the eyes. He could see that she had been crying because she had that same broken and scared look that she had back when he found her. Her cheeks were stained with tears and her hair was a mess. She looked as if she hadn't slept. He moved to wipe her tears. She flinched momentarily thinking he was going to hit her for being so brazen with how she touched him after everything. But he only went to stroke her cheek before wiping some of the tears. Na Yeon looked at his face but she couldn't read his expression. But that was no matter to her as she was going to enjoy this touch even if it was only for a moment. Chi Ong San was surprised when Na Yeon closed her eyes leaning into his touch. There it was again that vulnerability that softness and weakness that she had never shown. And he never knew she had. I promised you that I would come back didn't I? He said with a small smile that Na Yeon caught as she opened her eyes. That is when she noticed in the faded light what looked like bruises on his neck that looked like fingers. He must have noticed her staring as he followed her eyes. Oh. That. He said momentarily having forgotten about Gwen Am. I just had a run in with. One of my old bullies. Seems he was really taking to those monsters well. He tried to kill me as soon as he saw me because he said no one would stop him now. Na Yeon couldn't believe it, just because the world went to shit doesn't mean. She stopped that train of thought, she remembered that she wasn't that much better. She tightened her arms around his waist and felt him grunt in discomfort. Sorry, but he could kick like a horse. Na Yeon slowly reached out only pausing a moment to look for any kind of opposition from Chi Ong San. There wasn't any, only his eyes looking away from her. He was, nervous. She touched the bruises as he gave a paint hiss, 
she did her best to ignore it, she needed to see how much damage had been done to him. So she continued on, grazing up and down his neck and pushing against his sweater. He was bruised all over. Her hand gracefully traced down his arm coming to rest by his hand as she waited, for what? She didn't know. But she could still feel her other arm wrapped around his waist and his arms holding her close to his chest. What was this comfort? She rested her head against his chest but also heard a pain breath he tried to suppress. She waited a moment and then felt his chin rest on her head. As she finally moved to interlock their fingers, both of their hormones were going crazy but they steadied themselves. Na Yan didn't say anything and neither did Chi Ong San fearing that uttering a word would bring them crashing back to reality. But as they stood wrapped around each other, Na Yan could hear the pain silent breathes from Chi Ong San and knew she would have to do it. Sit down and take off your shirt, I need to check that you're okay. Chi Ong San just nodded as he went to sit on their makeshift bed which was surprisingly set neatly on the ground undisturbed, he knew she hadn't slept at least not there. He sat down and took off his shirt and Na Yan could see the extent of the bruises in the light. They were various purple streaks all over his body and she wondered just how had Chi Ong San gotten away but judging that he is here and not dead she was going to be satisfied with not knowing even if she already did. Na Yan sat behind him and set to work checking the wounds. She wasn't going to bother looking for a bite as she knew Chi Ong San was just the type of person to look out for others and let them know. She started slowly massaging the bruises lightly as he gave small pain hisses. She didn't know if she was actually doing anything but she had to try something to give him some comfort. The first few squeezes were painful but Chi Ong San soon relaxed now mostly letting out sighs of comfort. For some reason that brought a smile to her face. A thought had been nagging her ever since he had left. What was she going to do if he had not come back? Would she have just died in this room or left it and gotten caught and eaten by the zombies? What if they were eating Chi Ong San right now as she hopefully waited on him to come back? When she had tried to sleep the nightmares returned in greater numbers and she couldn't even sleep. Nightmares of Chi Ong San at the door banging for her to let him in but she couldn't move even if she tried and could only see him getting eaten alive. Nightmares of Jai Eong Su coming to eat her, thinking back on those made her so scared. She knew there was something between the two of them no matter how small and fragile it was. There was. A small flicker of a fame and she simply wanted to throw more fuel on it. Na Yan had never experienced something like this that she never had just seen from a distance. People liked each other, she liked other guys but they always seemed to go for the nice girls, only making her grow more bitter. Chi Ong San had a girl like that back in the broadcast room but from what she could remember it almost seemed one-sided as she had her eyes on Su Hayak. Maybe. She shook her head. What was she thinking she killed his best friend? But she knew he also felt something. The way they embraced each other as if touching something forbidden but precious as you didn't want to damage it. I was worried about you. I waited as long as I could in the classroom. That zombie under the piano was making a lot of noise so. I knew I had to go back soon because if they gathered at the door you couldn't make it in here. Na Yan knew that one of them had to take a leap and she knew that it would change everything, or so she hoped. And for the better, I remembered the promise I made to you saying that I will come back. It gave me the final push to win, I was losing before that. I couldn't let you think I wasn't a man of my word. He let out a small laugh that only seemed to draw her closer. She leaned against his back wrapping her arms around his waist and resting her chin on his shoulder as their heads leaned against each other. She had been with him only a few days but he made her nightmares go away and was still trying to be there. Na Yan had doubted before that Chi Ong San felt something similar writing off him stroking her hair as she slept and holding her whispering reassuring words to help her back to sleep as nothing more than him being friendly. 
but after they had held each other close and interlocked their fingers, she had felt it fully, that he was sharing those same conflicting emotions just as she had because that was an impossible hurdle to climb for whatever this was. It took only a moment but Na Yan had decided she wanted to experience it fully even if it seemed irrational for only these small feelings, but that was quelled by the thought that the rest of the world might now be like their school. So what if she never got another chance? What if she died the next time they opened those doors? She knew very well that the only reason she had made it this far was by other people protecting her and that likely as soon as she stepped out on her own she would die. The first kiss that came to Chi Ong San's neck made him tense up. He wanted to pull away but she held him firmly. Chi Ong San. I. I. Want you. She only needed to whisper the words as she was already by his ear. I know. I. No. I don't deserve you. I never will. But I. Feel something, and I know you do too. Na Yan, she heard him say, we can't. It's. I know but. Even if, this spark is small. I want to feel all of it. I know you can make it. But me. She said the last word with a small sob. Just let me know what love is like before we run back into hell. All of it. She kissed his neck again and this time he didn't tense up as she continued up to his cheek. Na Yan ran her hands up and down his torso. She froze when she saw him grab her hands fearing he wanted to stop but those fears were soon dispelled as he brought her hand up to his lips before giving it a kiss. Chi Ong San turned his head slowly to the side finally meeting her eyes in earnest. He knew what she meant about this, if the whole world had become like this then there was no telling if there was time for them to wait till it was alright to explore whatever there was building between them, would there ever been a time, would it ever be alright to explore this, especially with her. With their eyes locked they slowly started to close in toward each other and Chi Ong San saw her hesitate for a moment before he closed the distance giving her a gentle yet passionate kiss that only seemed to make her grip on him tighten. They don't know how long they savored this kiss but it was only momentarily as it grew hungrier by the minute. The two started kissing frantically as both of their hands scrambled over each other's bodies desperately trying to fill each other. Na Yan saw Chi Ong San trying to unbutton her sweater hesitating and she held his hands breaking off their passionate kiss and breathing heavily. It's okay Chi Ong San. I want you. All of you. She said quickly taking off her sweater and her shirt. She could see Chi Ong San's eyes roaming over her as he moved closer to her. Na Yan slowly lay down on their makeshift bed looking at him with a smile on her face. Come here, she said and she saw him hesitate again but this time she didn't have to do anything as he came over by himself seemingly in a trance. She felt the same. Chi Ong San placed himself atop her as they looked at each other in the eyes. It's, I've never done anything like this, he said nervously and she could only smile at that me neither. That was even my first kiss. But I want. You to be my first too. Na Yan could tell he was nervous so was she. And she didn't know where all this courage was coming from but she was going to ride this wave till she couldn't. She reached up stroking his cheek before pulling him down into a kiss, then let's stumble through this together. Na Yan felt him smile into the kiss and the two slowly but surely lost their clothes in a tangled mass of limbs and moans. Before they knew it they had gotten to the moment of truth. Na Yan. We can stop now if you want. To a part of her that was scared wanted to but she pushed on, I want to do this. Do you want it to? She waited and then saw him nod. They fumbled around for a bit trying to do it before a lot of pain came to Na Yan, that's. If she hissed, she could see Chi Ong San on top of her gritting his teeth, you're crying. Should. We stop. Na Yan shook her head wiping some of the tears, no don't stop. It hurts but, I'm happier, 
You didn't reject me. He leaned down giving her another kiss and softly stroking her hair, she could only guess how he had no idea what that did to her. The two started nervously and awkwardly fumbled their way through pain muffled screams, grunts and moans till they found a steady rhythm. With this being both of their first time it wasn't long before she wrapped her legs around him locking him in as he held her tightly as they found their release. They were breathing frantically foreheads pressed against each other, already covered in oceans of sweat but neither looked ready to let go. Chi Ong San kissed her again as they started their dance once again. She had expected that Chi Ong San would only seek his own enjoyment and she would have let him. But he didn't always making sure to stop when she said it was too much and showered her in kisses each time. They ended up at it for hours till they were both too spent as they could both barely stay awake. Chi Ong San got off her laying down next to her and a moment later she crawled onto his chest and lay down at her new favorite spot in the crook of his neck. As Na Yan was falling asleep she felt the now familiar beck of Chi Ong San's lips on her forehead. Good night Na Yan. She was too tired to prop herself up and kiss him back, so she just settled for a kiss to his neck. Good night Chi Ong San as they both fell asleep.